Hello everyone, Charcoal here and welcome back to A Closer Look. Today we're looking at the Ice Wings. I'll be going over their biology, society, and history, then giving them an overall score. Let's get started. Ice Wings have a generally medium-sized build all around, with serrated claws for gripping icy terrain, long horns that curve slightly downward, a cluster of spikes behind their head, and a row of more spikes that runs down their back and ends in another cluster on the tip of their tail. They have blue blood, can withstand sub-zero temperatures, and exhale a deadly frost breath. It's been shown to be very painful immediately after contact before numbing the area. The victim can be prevented from getting frostbite if the frozen area is thawed out quick enough. Icewing scale colors range from white to either gray, blue, or sometimes even pink. Why pink? I have no idea. Ice Wings have, or had, one of the most sophisticated societies in Wings of Fire. There was an official ranking system for the nobility where dragons were organized into circles that influenced their status. One of the queen's many responsibilities was updating the rankings every single night. The dragon at the bottom of the rankings could challenge the dragon at the top for their position through something called the Diamond Trial, where the combatants would enter an ice cave with enchanted spears, and let's just say only one would come out alive. The Ice Wings had a test similar to the Sea Wings Talons of Power ceremony to find Animus Dragons, and these dragons were bred into the royal family and restricted to using their power only once in their life, to create a gift that would benefit the whole tribe. There are some hints at Ice Wings believing in a divine being known as the Great Ice Dragon, but the specifics are unknown for now. Ice Wing names are chosen by the family member with the highest rank, and must be approved by the Queen. Naming schemes include, but are not limited to, ice formations like Icicle or Glacier, or arctic animals like Lynx or Narwhal. Okay, the Flames of Hope revealed some new information about the early parts of the timeline, so if you want to avoid spoilers, I recommend you skip to this timestamp. Okay, spoilers starting in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Just over 5,000 years ago, Pyria was a continent ruled by three human empires. After a long campaign led by Cottonmouth to steal dragon eggs from their nests, the dragons retaliated by burning down human civilization in an event known today as the Scorching. After the Scorching, the Ice Wings eventually evolved from whatever dragons existed at the time, if Ice Wings didn't exist already, and settled into a kingdom in the Tundra region on the head of the dragon-shaped continent. Several centuries before Darkstalker, Animus Magic originated with the Ice Wings, and they had the system I mentioned before of restricting their powers. Many Animus gifts piled up over the years, but I'll talk about the most relevant ones as they come up. Some notable ones in this time period are the Gift of Order, aka the Circle's Ranking Wall, and the Gift of Defense, also known as the Great Ice Cliff. The cliff ran along the Ice Wing's southern border and was enchanted to fire icicle spears at any non-Ice Wings who tried to cross it. Visitors were required to wear a special bracelet called the Gift of Diplomacy to prevent the wall from shooting them down and keep them from freezing to death in the extreme cold. Leading up to Darkstalker's time, the Icewing Queen was Queen Diamond. She and her son, Prince Arctic, both had animus powers, and Arctic was arranged to marry an Icewing named Snowflake. But when a Nightwing named Foeslayer visited the kingdom with her diplomat mother, Arctic fell in love with Foeslayer and fled to the Night Kingdom with her. Diamond was furious, and this would lead to a full-on war between the two tribes. She eventually secretly enchanted the Icewing Crown to make the wearer hate Nightwings with a passion. Arctic and Foeslayer had two children, Whiteout and the ever-so-infamous Darkstalker, who inherited Arctic's animus powers. I'll talk more about these two in the Nightwing video. For now, we're focusing on Arctic. Queen Diamond sent him letter after letter offering him various deals to get him to return home, but none of them worked. After several years, Foeslayer was captured in battle, and Diamond froze her inside the cave that would eventually become the setting of the Diamond Trial. The combatants would be tasked with unfreezing and killing Foeslayer, who would simply be refrozen and kept from dying. Now that she could use Foeslayer as leverage, Diamond offered Arctic another deal. He would hand over one of his kids to Diamond in exchange for Foeslayer's freedom and Arctic's place in the kingdom being restored. Arctic finally caved and attempted to take White out to the Ice Kingdom, but Darkstalker found out and stopped him in the most brutal way possible, by enchanting him to obey his every command, putting him up on a stage, and telling him to disembowel himself. After Arctic's death, the Nightwings fled their kingdom, so the ongoing war was left without an official conclusion, but the bad blood between these two tribes would remain for a very long time. The Ice Wings never got another Animus after Arctic due to a long string of bad genetic luck. Fast forward about 2,000 years, and the Icewing Queen was Queen Glacier. When the War of Sandwing Succession broke out, the Icewings became allied with Princess Blaze, who promised them a large chunk of land if they won. Sometime during the war, one of Glacier's daughters, Crystal, fell in love with a mudwing named Gariel, and started seeing him in secret. But Glacier either suspected something was up or knew all along, but more on that later. Three years before present day, one of Glacier's nephews, Hailstorm, was captured by a party of Skywings and given an enchanted necklace to turn him into a loyal Skywing named Pyrate, who would start spying for Queen Scarlet in the Talons of Peace. 
Six months after the end of the war, the Dragonettes of Destiny founded Jade Mountain Academy, and the Icewing students included Glacier's other nephew, Winter, and her niece, Icicle. Icicle fell under Scarlet's manipulation when the Queen started dream visiting her, and Scarlet convinced her to kill the Dragonettes of Destiny in exchange for freeing Hailstorm. After failing to kill Starflight, Icicle fled to the rainforest to attempt to kill Glory, and Winter and the rest of the Jade Winglet followed her, both to stop her and try to find Hailstorm along the way. Icicle was subdued and sent back to the Ice Kingdom for trial, while the others continued on their search for Hailstorm. The group ended up meeting Pyrite, and Winter removed her necklace, turning her back into Hailstorm. Winter took his brother back to the Ice Kingdom, where Winter was hailed as a hero and promoted to the top of the ranks. Meanwhile, Hailstorm, after being gone for three years and still recovering his memories, was sent down to the bottom. Little did the two know this was a ploy by their parents to keep from being accused of favoritism and get rid of Winter. They immediately planted the idea in Hailstorm's head to get the number one spot back by challenging Winter to a diamond trial, and gave him instructions on what to do to win. Once inside, Hailstorm and Winter worked out a deal. Hailstorm would leave the cave alone and tell everyone Winter was dead, and Winter would sneak out a back exit and leave the Ice Kingdom forever. Winter also freed Foeslayer on his way out so she could help the Jade Winglet find the old Night Kingdom. Unfortunately, that didn't work out very well, as Winter proceeded to almost die in a mid-air collision with Peril, so Foeslayer just kind of f***ed off to go get help, but she never found them again. When Darkstalker emerged from the mountain, Winter fell under his influence along with everyone else. He accompanied Kibli to the Sand Kingdom, and later the Night Kingdom once the spell was broken. Meanwhile, the Icewing tribe was stricken with a plague sent by Darkstalker, and one of the victims of this plague was Queen Glacier. On her deathbed, Glacier gathered her three daughters, Crystal, Snowfall, and Mink, to choose the next queen herself, in order to prevent another succession crisis like the Sandwings just had. Despite Crystal being the oldest of the three, probably because Glacier may have known about her having a secret lover, Glacier chose Snowfall as her successor. Crystal later fled the kingdom to be with Gariel. Once Snowfall got word that Darkstalker had caused the plague and was building an army of super soldiers, she gathered the Icewing army and flew to Jade Mountain for the final confrontation. Several Icewings died during the battle, including Winter and Hillstorm's father. The Icewings and Nightwings were both affected by an empathy spell that made them finally see eye to eye before teleporting them back to their kingdoms. Winter left the Ice Kingdom again and eventually founded a new town called Sanctuary. Later on, the Pantalan dragons came to Pyria and landed in the Ice Kingdom. Snowfall ventured into the Ice Wing's forbidden treasury and grabbed the Gift of Vision, a ring that periodically gives the wearer visions of other dragons' memories. She led the Pantalans to Jerboa's hut and took a few of them to Sanctuary, where she participated in a summit with the other queens to decide what to do about the other mind situation, and she sent Lynx on the mission back to Pantalan. After returning to the Ice Kingdom, Queen Snowfall decided to destroy the Great Ice Cliff and Ranking Wall, and then she found the Icewing Crown was enchanted and got rid of that too. Lynx didn't do much on the Pantala mission, but she did come back alive and mostly unharmed. And that is where the Icewing's history, at least so far, ends. So, my final thoughts? The Ice Wings are pretty cool, pun entirely intended. They have a pretty interesting design, and they had one of the most unique societies in the series. But that's the key word here, had. The fact that they've now lost the biggest thing that makes them special really stings. Plus, there are a few tribes that I just like better even before this happened, so I'm gonna have to dock them a few points. 7 out of 10, tied with the Skywings. Time for this week's featured fan art. We've got pieces from The Weird One, Raven the Sky Nightwing, What Is My Life, Aviel, and Mitch. Thanks a bunch, guys, and if any of you want to submit your own fan art, you can do so in my Discord server. This has been Wings of Charcoal, and I will see you all in the next video.